What's up guys, welcome to today's video. The goal today is to get the SR20 completed and running in the car. Now if you missed yesterday's video, we're at a bit of a standstill because we left dowel pins that you need to align the head and the head gasket to the block at the machine shop. So we can't really do anything, although we do have a friend that fingers crossed might have some. We're just waiting on him to see if he has them or not. In the meantime though, we are starting to go through the new fuel system. Ever since I had the issue with Nicole's car, where it got hydro locked from a stuck injector. I've maintained pretty close relationship with Dshirks and they sent me a bunch of stuff so I could redo the fuel system on my car for this next setup. Just to go over kind of everything briefly, we have it all laid out on the table so it'd be really easy to talk about it. <laughs> I like your little display, Alberto. Yeah, that's how you gotta do it. <laughs> this right here is their DW400 pump. It's made by Bosch, of course it's E85 compatible. It'll outflow a Walbro 450 and apparently I want to say they said you can make like 700 horsepower on this pump or something absurd. So I probably won't ever be needing to upgrade it again after that. I've got a nice new stainless filter that's just going to hook right up to the AN lines. And I also have like a stainless steel filter that is cleanable. Which will definitely be nice since I'm running E85 and I want to make sure that there's no clogs or any gunk in the lines. I've been told with side feed injectors, it starts to get tricky when you get in the higher CCs in regards to tuning and still getting the car to idle nice. And when you go top feed, there's a lot more options. So these injectors that I have are their, these are their EV14 1200cc injectors. It's E85 compatible, very easy to tune with. We size them based on my power goal of like mid 400, so I'm guessing they'll probably flow to like 500 horsepower, but don't quote me on that. They also come with a nice little pigtails, so since I didn't get my new harness, I'll just kind of splice this in. That way I have the right connectors for the injectors. And no more stock fuel pressure regulator. We have their DWR1000 fuel pressure regulator, so it'll make it way easier to adjust while tuning. And of course, again, it's E85 compatible. So all that stuff should be relatively easy to install. We are going to do it after we had the motor in, but I think we're going to do it now since we're just kind of waiting and uh, I did work a bit more on the bay. Um, I don't remember if last night if I had the battery fitted up yet or not, but I kind of started putting in that sub harness that delivers power to stuff, kind of tucked it behind here, cleaned up some of the connections and um, I really wish I had more before shots so you guys could see the comparison, but before there was just this huge mess of wires just all blah, all over there. So we're getting there and I also made a little mount for this fuse box. Not the best thing in the world, but better than it just dangling there like it used to be. So satisfying. Believe it or not, I actually have two identical harnesses right here. So this one on the left is a harness that was in my car with the SR, and then this one on the right is the one from Nicole's car when she had the SR. Originally, I was gonna use my harness because I thought it was in better condition than hers, but when I looked at it a little bit closer, um, I really don't like that where it connects to the ECU. Um, I've got a bunch of random stuff just kind of spliced in, a bunch of connections, whereas hers is pretty clean. Um, I'm still gonna rewrap a lot of the harness because it could definitely be cleaned up and wound a little bit tighter, but I think this is a better starting point. And on top of that, we already have the sensor wired in for the Apexi, so it's a lot easier to just use this harness than this one, and it's cleaner. My friend did end up finding those head alignment dowel pins and Shulman saved the day, grabbed them. It was actually my friend Sebastian. You guys have seen his S14 in my videos, I think. It's the S14 with the big turbo SR. But uh, this is what held us up last night. So the reason why these are important, you could get away without using them, but it's really sketchy because it holds the head gasket in place and center as well as when you put the head on. You could kind of line it up by eye, but it's just sketchy. No more. Yeah, we yeah, don't. This will keep the head from not moving. Matt's friends were like, oh, you don't need those. You I, don't I need those. They just told me I was Who like, said uh, that? People. What kind of friends are those? No, not good people. <laughs> <laughs> Dang, that's <laughs> calling them out. Oh, no. So we just lost your friends. Me. No, it's he's okay. Gonna it. kill me. We're oh, just playing. God. They were looking out for us. Uh, All right, yeah, that's cool. You guys are cool. Yeah. Shulman, I don't know about you. Yeah, okay. Yeah, sure. Squeeze him in like this. See how he closes? Mm hmm. And then. Try to get him in there. All right, so this is the cleaned up harness. Again, it's really hard to tell how much time I put into this when it's on the Swiss Tracks floors. I feel like it just makes it look not that nice, but I got it wound way tighter, got all the new electrical tape, everything's all situated before. It just had a lot of like straggler pieces. If you look at that compared to what used to be in my car, which was this crusty mess, I mean, we're talking a load of a difference, so. 
I mean, obviously, I could probably <laughs> splice everything up and do nice heat shrink or something crazy with it, but just for the time purpose and actually just still wanting to clean it up, um, I think it's gonna look way nicer and it's gonna perform great. I didn't film it, but earlier today what I did also was the top of the power steering pump um, just was super corroded and you can actually take like a uh, wire brush and you can just keep going at it. You can get it shined and nice. Same thing works on the alternator. I already did the front section where you can see it, but I'll do the back just so you can uh, see the difference that it makes. But it doesn't really take very long and it makes it look so much nicer. So if you compare this area that I just did right there to uh, the black section behind it, it's like night and day. It's almost head time. Just doing one final inspection and cleaning. Then we can toss her on. If you guys remember, when it comes to head gaskets, we love the Primatex copper stuff. Alberta, you want to explain why again? Um, because it enhances the sealing capability of the gasket, so that way when you have like the water package, the water passages or oil passage, you just creates like this little film of added protection to the gasket and it just lasts longer. This stuff makes a mess though, so we're gonna be spraying it outside instead of in the garage. Little idea we had just to make it kind of look cool is to stick a piece of paper behind the uh, place where it says Apexi, so that'll actually be sticking out of the motor and you'll still be able to see it. So that way it'll kind of have more definition because it's a different color underneath. Always gotta put a dab on both edges for the where the two covers meet because there's always that little line and oil will sit through there. So you always gotta silly on that. You have to go sideways. Oh, to get it around the stupid chain tensioner then? Yes. Um what? chain move uh, open it. So it goes over this side. There you go. What's caught on that lip? Push, push. All right, sweet. We're in. All right, uh, let's fire up. ARP assembly lube. You get thicker with a cold. <laughs> Thirty, sixty, ninety. I'm doing them at 31st, then 60, and then 90. Oh, check this out. Look, we just came on Amazon Prime. Got a little like battery cable bracket. Before I had this like crappy looking rubber one. So it's just like a little billet aluminum one. So it'll look a little bit cleaner. Yeah, perfect size. Oh, yeah. Oh. Where does Prime in the lifters right now? In addition to Nicole's old harness, I'm also utilizing her old transmission since mine's a little damaged. I'm going to CD09 eventually, but the kit's gonna take probably another couple weeks to develop, so uh, in the meantime, I'm gonna see if I can make another SR trans last. I'll just go easy in the clutch kicks. But the last person RTV the shifter plate on, so it's gonna be kind of annoying to get off. Bordo, I think, is starting to do the uh, rocker arms. I'm currently just scraping off this old gasket before I put the other one on. Stupid. <laughs> What are you doing? Put on the cams in place. Looking so good. I blade the lifters, I put the shims in place and rocker arms, put assembly loop on everything, now it's time to put the camshaft in. Chain has these three links that uh, mark the timing marks. Obviously when you're building a new engine you can do that, but once it rotates and it's lost and you just gotta do it the other way. But with this one, you have this shiny links that mark where the sprockets are gonna line up with. So I already have the one on this crankshaft put on, it's on top the center, and then this one will line up where I need to, where I need the cam just to line up with. These are the adjustable cam gears we're gonna be using. It's a shame that you can't see them because they're very pretty. Check it out, pretty cool, right? So you can actually just adjust where the cam is degreed by using that, which we couldn't do before. I also have a pretty fancy uh, oil plate. That essentially blocks off on the engine. It essentially replaces this thing here so we can have an externally located um, oil filter. And then I have another little plate thing. Uh, let me see if I can find it. I can't find it, but I'll show you guys later when I can't find it. We're not gonna do it 
immediately anyway. I'm still waiting for my oil cooler from uh, Mishimoto. I ordered it kind of late. So uh, once I get that, I'm gonna redo this whole cooling system. But for now, we'll just kind of use the stock system. I'm silicone on the water neck, about to put that on. Gotta use Alberto technique where you kind of like try to make dimes on it. So when you press it in, it gets like an even edge. Time for the pretty intake manifold. Pretty stock intake manifold. So shiny. Time for the fun part. This came out so sick. So Alberto, I know we don't have a wastegate spring for the external wastegate. How do we know which springs to put in it? Depending on how much boost you want to run. Martin said to put spring pressure at about a bar. So it's 14.7 psi. But how do we know which springs to use? Is there like a diagram somewhere? Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah, color code it, but you lost it. Where's the paper at? I'm sure I can Google it. So we've actually been utilizing an OEM Nissan SR20 gasket kit that you can actually get from Injuku. The only thing that we really change about it, it comes with this exhaust gasket and we like to upgrade to an OEM S15 gasket which Injuku also sells. Without me even saying anything, you can see that this is a metal multi-layer gasket. It's gonna hold up to some abuse. This, is this even metal? What's this made out of? That's like some composite stuff. I forgot what it was. It's like asbestos kind of thing. This holds up boost. That just burns through. Dang, that fits tight. That's sick. I feel like my bottom mouse that I actually might have like stuck out farther. Alberto is trying to figure out how we're gonna run the water lines right now. It's safe to say we found Big Boost's new favorite place because this is the third night in a row we're doing Chinese. He wanted it and you wanted it too. Okay. Well, I mean, I wanted it, but like, I just agree. Chinese is really good. It's always the best. His decision the first two nights in a row. And then it was a mutual decision tonight. He suggested it the first one. I asked for it the second time. And then Matt asked for it. I was like, yeah, oh, I, mean, I, mean, I could, I, it was good. I could eat it. Yeah. Good. Everything was close. It was, it was all close too, so I mean, yeah. yeah. I at least switched it up and got some sweet and sour chicken. Alberto got some sesame chicken. Nicole got some lemon chicken. She didn't actually want any chicken, but I was like, you know what? You're going to get some chicken. And then Shulman, what'd you get? Honey chicken. Honey chicken. We got all the chickens. We don't discriminate. Hey, there's so many comments about people getting PUBG. You need to get on PUBG. <laughs> Alberto yesterday literally put on Chinese music while he ate his Chinese food. That's not funny. You're really what are you really talking about? I don't think that's funny. No, I just, I just think it's funny. He's Come enjoying on, the culture. Outside. He wants to feel the culture while he eats. It is. No, it's really nice. It's, it's just like funny. Silence, silence, silence. Give me his face, give me his face. Wait, can you put a bite of chicken in no, your mouth? Say that. <laughs> no, don't. I'm not gonna I'll do it. All right guys, so I kind of have bad news. The original goal was to get the engine running tonight, which honestly would have been a bit of a stretch anyway, but we now definitely can't because we realized that um, Radium actually sent us the wrong size injector seat. It's a 25 mil, but we need a 30 mil. Um, I think these might be for like an S15 or something like that. So we're gonna have to wait until tomorrow to see if we can get some because the injectors Sorry. <laughs> won't properly seat in these rubber ones. Um, but there are quite a few local shops and people that have radium setups around here, so we should be able to source some because there's no way they'd be able to ship in time and I don't believe Injuku keeps them in stock. But uh, I'd say another good goal for tonight would be to just get the engine mounted, maybe even wired up. That way tomorrow morning all we need is these guys and we can get it running, break it in, and shoot for a tune on Tuesday. All right, so I'm trying to get the water lines and oil feed lines situated. It's really hard when you're trying to make the lines look good and then also be functional. So they have to like flow good and everything. So like right now, I have this issue where here I can't go straight, so I have to go this way. I can't go down either. So this is the only option that I have with this. Then this one, I already figured it out. I have to run a 45 all the way through the manifold because if I run a 90, it hits against the manifold. And we are going to put some sort of yeah, uh, heat protecting coating. Heat here, and this goes here. Feet, is, the oil field is already figured out. I'm working on getting the angle better. And then I have to work on the drain line, which is going to have to go like probably forward a little bit, then come all the way around the downpipe and not the, man, the around the manifold. Clearing the wastegate, like straight through here. But, uh, it's tricky. A little bit of a task. At least the lines are getting there. Yeah, it looks really good. It'll probably look even better once I'm done with this, but let's see what we got. Alberto, this uh, this wastegate dump tube looks like if it were the right size up here, it'd be pretty easy to just dump into the downpipe. What do you think about that? Does not compute. <laughs> 
<laughs> Alberto, uh, what? Also, uh, there's a problem that the steering shaft is going to be going through here, so you can run that. It's going to be in the way. But, it but. It would be better if you have this. But. And you do this. But, but. Or but there's no tube. This is loud like mine. Alberto wants me so I badly. A tube like this big like mine. <laughs> Alberto wants me so badly not oh, to no, run. No, no, wait, I got, I got a better idea. There you go, out the hood, yes. Alberto wants me so badly to run an external gate and I want to dump it in the downpipe, but I'm going to give it a chance, just for a big boost. <laughs> out the fender! Oh wait, look perfect, I what? got it. You guys are gonna like this. So, I got the OG Starbucks cap, the same one that's gone through my ownership of this car and the previous owner of this car. It used to be the cap for the reservoir. And I'm gonna make something to make it work. So, this comes from a little kit that uh, is for like bleeding your coolant. And uh, I'm gonna make something happen out of nothing. So, my little invention works. I don't know if I'm too crazy about it. It just doesn't look as clean as I'd like. So I think I'm just gonna end up kind of rigging something up with zip ties like I had in the past, but it was a cool thought. Just not very nice. Kind of annoying when I am. I'm probably gonna jinx myself by saying this, but I'm pretty stoked that somehow the original Starbucks cap that's been on this car still exists. Um, in case you're new to the channel and you don't get why there's a Starbucks cap in here, the original theme for this car from the original owner was supposed to be a Starbucks Frappuccino. So that's the whole thing with the cream and mocha, if you get it. But um, trying to keep the theme alive as I feel like nothing else better represents me than coffee. But loving it. Trying to get that goal of at least getting the engine in the bay. So me and Alberto have been working hard and really not filming that much. He's got all the lines figured out. He had to do some custom bending on the uh, dipstick. Right now he's just tightening down the manifold with that new gasket. Um, over here, I've been working on wiring again. Um, I got the wire for my subwoofer ran. Got it pretty nice and clean down there and going to the distribution block. Still have to wire the distribution block to the battery, um, but I'm really happy with how that looks. I also wired my boost solenoid for my boost controller. Um, it's kind of just tucked up there with the brake lines and then mounted right down here. I think before it used to be over here more, but because of the manifold, we might have some heat issues. So for the time being, it's just located there. It's 2.30 a.m. We're tired. I uh, got a lot more done on the bay wiring wise. Alberto, the engine's pretty much ready to go in, right? Almost. It's got to degree those cams, um, saw the distributor and put a clutch and flywheel and match the running up and it's ready to go. So the uh, whole degree thing is going to be kind of complicated because originally the plan was to drive the car over and have it degreed in the car. Um, it might be easier to just take the engine there and get it degreed, but then comes to the situation of how I get the engine there because my truck's attached to the trailer and I don't want to go and attach the truck from the trailer so I can get this and I'm trying to make everything simple. So I, I just got to figure out tomorrow what the easiest way to go about it is, but uh, tomorrow, 100%, promise you guys, we will get it fired up. Let's do it. I'm going to wake up bright and early so I can call and see if I can find those uh, injector seats and figure out the situation with the degreeing. Um, but uh, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. I know it was a bit chaotic and I probably didn't go into as much detail as I could have, but that's what happens when we're both super, super focused on getting stuff done with a limited amount of time. Thank you guys for watching. Hope you enjoyed it and I will see you tomorrow. I just want that thing to whistle. I just want to hear what it sounds like. <laughs> when you say